Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today we want to talk about a little story that's unfolding with WD. Ultimately, something that we weren't the first to talk about. Let's be straight about this. You know, friend of the channel, Will, over at SpaceRex, made a video, I believe, middle of last week while we were covering Computex, um, detailing some, you know, slightly questionable business practices by WD. And after that video, quite a lot of you, and I really do mean a lot of you, got in touch to ask, one, what do we think? Two, why have we not made a video about it yet? And three, is this as good or as bad or whatever it is overall? Now, uh, his video is linked below, so I do recommend you check that out. Also, Eddie's video um, on that side of the screen, I believe. Um, he also made a video about this. And right now, this is us discussing this whole thing. We're going to talk about what it is, what the implications are, and overall, should you be concerned? I think the TLDR for most users is going to be simply... At the moment, uh, certain WD drives uh, that arrive with something called the WDDA on board, it's uh, effectively an alternative or add-on to the existing smart settings of the hard drive, which analyzes lots of little factors inside the drive to, to keep an eye on its health. And it was recognized by several users in different forums online that once the drive had reached three years of power on these drives that had WDDA, they, the drives themselves flagged as warning, a warning that was picked up by Synology DSM. Now, a lot of users seeing that, as Eddie stated there, would go, huh, my drives are showing a warning. I need to go out and buy new drives. But of course, the status quo is not that straightforward. And these drives, as Ed said there, are showing complete 100% health in every other regard, are now being flagged as warning, something that a lot of users online have ultimately said is a little bit anti anti consumer it's a little bit dis, you know disingenuous with the truth then ultimately is this wd trying to cash in on things now a few factors straight off the bat of course number one yes these drives do arrive with three years of warranty so once you start you once you've purchased them you get your three years straight off the bat if you go for an enterprise drive there's five years so there is the argument that all this is doing is saying Oh, you've got a three-year warranty. We've said this drive can last three years at least. And when your three years are up, you know, we're still working within the confines of that warranty there. I think that it would be a slightly a pinch naive way to describe it because we are talking about power on, not just chronological time that has passed. But for you, Eddie, the way this has been approached, um, both by WD and arguably within the NAS systems themselves, where are the errors? Where, where are the failings here? The failing is that there is no symbiotic relationship between Synology and third-party hard drives, since they are pushing their agenda now with their hard drives. Mm. So they want people to feel safe only uh, by using their hardware. Mm. So for that reason, they have um, ignored this um, symbiotic relationship with third-party drives like WD mm. or Seagate or any, anything else. So in this case, WD comes with their own health management um, system in internally, which is called WDDAs. So, uh, Seagate has um, Iron Wolf um, uh, health similar management, system, yeah. yeah, management as well. But what, what it is, it is um, a, just a checklist, just things that um, runs in the background on the hard drive. Um, and when s one of those side checks um, tr trigger the alert, then, and then there's a communication to Synology DSM happening at the same time so when the hard drive is saying to the DSM operating system there is um, a potential warning or there is some critical error so it tries to communicate with DSM and then on DSM side they need to handle this this code which is being pushed through the situation and then they need to make an action on this if it's a warning then they could warn a user saying that um, hard drive is um, flagging that sort of um, warning do you want to make an action on this or not? Or if there is a critical error, then DSM can decide to disable the drive and use a hotspot, for example, to replace a build if there is something uh, serious. But in this situation, the problem is that Synology is blaming um, WD and they refuse to take an action in this situation because when the warning comes through, a user top hard drive user is asked for Bisonology to go to WD and um, resolve this issue there. And when WD says to them, okay, do smart checks and see if everything is okay. And then they do check uh, what's uh, the smart test and it comes back okay. 
there is no way in Synology DSM to disable this warning now. You know, mm. and, and that's an issue because they are not communicating each with each other. I mean, arguably, this kind of uh, drive flagging for more than just traditional health analytics has existed in other forms. If we look at SSD technology, particularly the birth of M2 NVMe level storage, you know, it's been a long time now that SSDs have not only been uh, kind of... Uh, packaged as a warranty uh, within those years. Also, thanks to uh, innovations in improved write performance on SSDs, that has necessitated a number of drives, at least in the SSD market, that have a five-year warranty or X number of terabytes written over time or drive writes. So you can have comfortably some SSDs in the market that may have a five-year warranty, but if you've used up the uh, intended or um, published a terabyte rate on that drive that lifespan you can actually have a drive go out of warranty before the years have gone past it's whichever one comes first but this is the first time i've seen anything like this at least be loudly alerted within the hard drive spectrum and again as mentioned in a few different areas online number one there is options apparently when you use particular drives that have this feature on board to disable uh, it in uh, the storage manager of DSM, or there is ways to go in with SSH in the background. Um, Synology doesn't really have much of an updated list of which drives arrive with WDDA. They listed barely any, in fact, but I do know from doing QNAP testing, we'll talk about them later in the video, that I've seen WDDA on a number of different WD drives that I've used in the past because uh, like, uh, latest revisions of QNAP actually utilize that on there. But again, we'll touch on that later on. But ultimately, let's, you know, let's cop, let, let's play devil's advocate. Why would WD alert a user that after, uh, after exactly three years of power on operation, what is their motivation, good or bad, do you think? Over to you. Um, in my opinion, more they communicate with the oper operating system, uh, more accurate, more, you know, better, better steps you can take to avoid from potential you know, data damage or data mm. loss. So I would say that's fine that they are actually sending the message when the drive um, warranty runs out, when when they uh, with a certain amount of terabytes been written to the drive. Anything from the spec sheet, what they promise to a consumer, they should actually push those warnings through the DSM and then there should be option in DSM to ignore it or act on it. Mm. Because in enterprise sort of solu solution, I would want to replace those drives when the promised um, lifetime is uh, is approaching, you know, to the to the mm. <laughs> to the end point. I would definitely want to take some sort of steps, but I understand in home home uh, use situation, I might I might not in be interested in replacing those drives, you know, because there is nothing that important running on those drives, mm. and the performance is not that important. So, so I, I would think there is there is if it's handled in the wrong way. This could be a tricky way to, you know, to try to upsell drive to sell to mm -hmm. make people replace their drives so they could profit on this thing. But um, if there is an option to ignore these messages, um, there is there is nothing wrong with communicating more information you send towards operating system. You know, better better sort of action you can make um, think, based on this information. But again, I. I for me, and again, you alluded to it a little bit there, and I think this is kind of what's annoyed a lot of people. It's a question of narrative. So, for example, if I have a drive in my NAS system that's now about to go out of warranty for one reason or another, tell me the drive is approaching the end of warranty. There is definitely some sort of narrative conflict between both the drive and the host system. Again, that goes back to a point you made earlier on, a little bit of this does come down to the overall server that the drives are in uh, interpreting uh, these warnings in the appropriate fashion. Because, you know, we do see tailored warnings from drives that get too hot, uh, drives that have some kind of um, error with regards to drive or black, bad block sectors. Those alerts that drives do give off from smart or otherwise, and, and back to the days of Seagate Ironwolf, those alerts were translated well, both narratively and literally on alerts in notifications from within NAS platforms. But it seems that this one 
hasn't, which is really odd given that the earliest um, not, you know, notes we found on knowledge centers from Synology and other places with regards to the WDDA uh, support on drives go back to 2019, 2020, I believe. So that's, that's a long time that this has been around that only now we're seeing it bubbling up on forums. Maybe it's the three-year warranty. We'll have to, that's probably no. how these things have crossed over. Why do you disagree? No, no, because it's... <laughs> WDDA has been around for a while now, but why is now a story? Because um, when DSM was released, year, year two years ago, two years, a few years ago, DSM seven, yeah, those drives were purchased, and obviously now when those drives run out of warranty, they are getting these alerts because the issue is with DSM, with operating system. It always was with DSM seven. If those people running DSM six, they don't have. Uh, this warning issue, or those people using those same drives, same WDDA technology on QNAP devices or ACES, so they don't get these warnings. Mm. So I can't blame WD for this, just because the operating system is managing those those warning messages in the wrong way. There's no problem on QNAP or DSM-6, only DSM-7. And now suddenly, when everyone bought those drives a few, dr few years ago, uh, are getting these messages because <laughs> they're approaching this two years or three years warranty lifetime i mean again when i was um i was at the uh, synology's own event and the first time i heard about this was from a synology employee that was talking about this that alerted the matter to me and it's only when i got back after chasing up all the issue uh, all of the events and you know releases at computex that i was able to look into this proper but one of the things you talk about in the article link below, Eddie's put together a whole uh, FAQ on this whole thing link below. Uh, you do talk about QNAP and the way they've approached this. And although QNAP and particularly their latest 5.1 rollout, I think the release candidate and full release, if not already, is almost on the verge. They do include support of D, uh, WDDA coverage. But as you point out in your article, it's not an actionable alert. The information's there and they support it, but an only actionable alert at this time seem to be smart on your guide below i mean ultimately what do you think needs to be done from your point of view and everything you know on this to make this right to make this better who needs to move what rock dsm they, they need to make changes on dsm and um interpret these messages properly and allow users to act ignore hide the messages mm. but do not scare them I, for me, I think I would say, although Synology DSM and other NAS platforms that choose to, you know, interact with these WDDA alerts need to have more tailored alerts, I still think WD for me, I know we're not going to completely agree on this, but I think WD here, including that as a warning in the way that it has been done, I think as a NAS drive, there must have been ways and means that they could have pushed that information to the system in a more informative way but again neither one of us works on dsm's back end there do you think this is a good enough reason for users to start jumping ship away from wd products definitely not definitely not as i said more hard drives more information you can get from a hard drive better decisions you can make hmm. and that's not the case actually with um, synology drives which they're trying to push they're saying that there is more symbiotic relationship between the hard drives, but all they do is they allow their own firmware to be updated on these drives. They don't have the same experience like WD or Seagate. They have like, you know, decades of experience uh, and what sort mm -hmm. of messages need to be uh, communicated to the operating system or not. So all of this is crucial that data, which can be used in uh, operating system of, of the NAS to make, you know, actions. I mean, we, we'll discuss Synology hard drives a little bit more in a video coming quite soon. But I, again, I think there's a little bit more. To, I mean, again, I'm talking purely from my own perspective. But uh, when it comes to drives within a NAS system, I think there is an advantage to having a drive from a brand that's having the firmware tailored to the system it's going into, not a more broader one. Because I think even in that world, it would be argued that then the alerts from the drive would be tailored to the system they're in. It's a very, very, very minor point, I would say. But I imagine in a WD NAS system that was using WD NAS drives, had WD NAS systems not, you know, pretty much become, if not vaporware, then dirt certainly on their way out, then those systems would probably in interpret these warnings a little better. But that's all conjecture. We don't know. I mean, for me personally, 
I'm a, still a little disappointed by WD almost, I'm not going to say stealth including this, and I know you don't agree with me that more information's better being pushed to the end user, but I do think the way this three-year power on thing has been pushed forward, it could have been done a little clearer, and particularly for those users that have gone out and spent money um, on new drives that they may not have needed given on their own setup there. One thing I will state, something you and I have discussed prior to this video, we've not really had a chance to talk about this, only just got back from Taipei, and that was this story, it's not that loud, is it? This is we've covered a lot of different stories with regards to uh, storage manufacturers making errors from ransomware to WD, of course, with their shingle magnetic recording fiasco. My God, I still get nightmares about that. But this has not become a big thing, which is really strange. Do you not think that kind of, it comes down to two things. Is it one, not everyone's that annoyed by this or two, it's just not widely known. Either way, like if it is the if it's the latter, why has WD been so quiet about this? Because this sounds to me like something that could snowball, right? I don't think so. I don't think so, really. And I think it, this story is growing very fast because when this came out first, it, I think it attracted around seventy thousand you know views. People were very interested actually in this subject because they were worried what's going on, mm. and I think. They might be coming down right now, realizing that it's not, you know, as, as, as serious as, as they might think. And um, there is definitely not WD at fault. <laughs> Again, I think we may have to do a follow up video on this because I think you and I are never going to agree on this. But what do you guys think at home? This is, I would say, a subject that has certain nuances to it. And I think if you do check out Eddie's article in the description below, it will articulate a lot of your questions. So I recommend you check those out. But for you, are you a WD owner that has seen these alerts appear on their system? Or are you someone that was on the verge of buying a WD product? And this business practice by WD, this position from Synology NAS, uh, dealing with these drives, you know, in a possibly not great narrative fashion, has that put you off? Let us know in the comments. But apart from that, cheers for joining us today, Eddie. Always good for us to chat on these YouTube videos here. Oh, I know we've got a few of these coming up in the next week or so. Um, but apart from that, thanks for watching, everyone, um, and we will see you next time.